Hey guys, welcome to the ServiceNow world and today we'll see part 23 of ServiceNow developer interview question and answer series. As you know, in this series, we are discussing about all the theoretical questions or like scenario based, which are which we are given like uh, which given answers orally that we are discussing in this series. Okay, so without any delay, let's go to the first question. So the first question is, what is the use of wait field in ServiceNow email notification? So the wait, the wait field in email notification is used to prioritize which email gets sent to recipients in scenarios where multiple notifications are triggered for the same email event and target to the same users. And default value of wait will be the zero. And when, mul when multiple emails are triggered are the highest value wait field will send the notification and remaining will get will skip them. in other words we can say that like wait field used for prioritize the notification when it's triggered to the same user okay so let's say like uh, two notification is there and that is sending for the same user okay and th in that case we have to decide which of those notifications we have to send sent sent right so that time uh, that in that case we have to use the wait field value so the default wait field value is zero if you put like any value greater than zero that will having the highest weight okay so that will kind of a highest precedence okay now we are moving to the next question next question is how many ways to create an incident in service now this is the i can say most underrated question which i found okay the thing is that like it's based based upon your like analytical skill okay like how deep how deep you have like explored the platform then only you can answer okay so so answer is that like we can create the incident manually we can create using the record producer we can create an incident using the employee self-service that is a nothing that is a service portal we can use the inbound email action like if someone sends the email to service now then we can set up the inbound email action and it will create an incident okay or we can use the like uh, importing XML or XML and then using the transform we can create an incident. We can use the server side scripts like workflow, business rule, script include and a script action and many 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 more are there okay. And using the rest and soap API so let's say if you are using if you configure the rest message or soap message by using that also we can create an incident. So if I have found these many ways. It's not like these are like only fixed, fixed, fixed ways are there to create an incident. Okay. If you know any more than that, just let me know in the comment box. Okay. Let's move to the next question. Next question is what is the use of send to event creator checkbox in notification? So uh, when you like, uh, when you like uh, configure the notification, when you switch to advanced view, okay. So like in that uh, one, uh, the in advanced view, you have seen one, uh, what is that called? Tab is there, like uh, home to send. Okay. So there you will found that uh, this checkbox send to event creator. So what is the use of that? So the answer is that if send to event creator option is checked, then it will send the notification to the person who caused the event trigger. In other words, we can also say that like it will send a notification to the person who performed the action that started the noti notification process. Basically like whoever has triggered the notification for that person, uh, the notification will send it out. So I'll give you example. Let's say like uh, you, have, you have configured one uh, not notification for the incident. Okay. And uh, what happened? Like uh, there uh, you have co configured two users. That is user a uh, user one and user two. Okay. So let's say take a scenario. There you have unchecked the send to event creator. Okay. So let's say like uh, user A has created the incident. And this time you have unchecked this send to event creator checkbox. So what will happen? Once user A will create a incident, incident in that case what happened? they will not get that particular not notification. Why? Because send to event creator button, uh, send to event creator option is unchecked. So let's uh, take in the se second scenario again. The re recipient is a user A and us us user B is there. And this time we have checked the send to event creator. Okay. 
what will happen once we once user a once user a will create an incident what will happen and this time the user a will get the notification why because they have we, we uh, during the creation of a notification we have checked the send to event creator uh, checkbox okay so i hope you got it it's uh, very simple i just try to explain you with an example as well however in the screen you will see the definition as well okay now we are moving to the next question next question is can we apply dictionary overhead to the tables present in the different scope so the answer is no we cannot apply dictionary overrides on the tables that are in a that are in a uh, same scope so sorry i think it's a typo error basically like uh, if it's in a different scope we cannot uh, apply the dictionary override okay if if the pres if the table both of the parent and child tables are present in same scope then only we can apply the dictionary override okay now we are moving to the next question next question is that what are the different types of available types of notification available in service now so there are basically three types are there but if you search like maybe you get four or five as well so basically these three are there like email notification that these are the email notification these are sent to the users via email and can be triggered by specific events or condition within service now so we have seen like a, a system notification there we configure the email notification right where we have to triggered by the event or maybe like a, if any record got inserted or updated that also with that time we can also trigger push notification this can be sent to mobile users devices by service now so if you are like if you are designing any mobile app for for in service now then we are sent to we are using the push notification for pushing the uh, any and and related to the any task okay so maybe like you have seen if you if you have like a um, by if you have like a any app in your mobile phone so you'll get the like notification right for that particular app so that is called nothing that is called push notification in platform notification these appear within the service now interface and can be used to alert users to updates or task so in platform notification you may have seen like some kind like when some uh, using someone using the uh, connect chat or maybe like if any of the task is assigned to you so you will get in the corner right you you will see like a kind of notification other than that uh, one is there that is quick messages okay that is also there and uh, one more is there that is messaging app messaging app is nothing like if we when we are our when we integrated our service now to the like third party apps like uh, cisco chat maybe teams maybe slack so that we are that is not like available in service now but we can integrate with service now okay but basically these three only are there which is in the documentation that is email notification push notification and in platform notification okay now we are moving to the next question next question is that how do you handle errors in flow so in flow design if you see like uh, asking like sometimes they were asking like how to handling the handle the errors so you, we have the error handle error handler uh, error handler right so we can use of that so that is the answer like using error handling mechanism like try catch blocks to gracefully handle errors and prevent flow failure flow failures in the last video i have asked about like how to prevent some submission via business rule so like prevent like record submission it's like a complete question is how to prevent form submission via business rule so we can use the current dot set abort action and in the bracket we have in the parameter we have to pass true in business rule script to abort the action okay so today's video's question is how do you pass data between flow activities if you know the answer please write in the comment box i'll give the answer in the next video till that time thank you god bless you all